cleanup of environmental hazards at the Department of Energy's Oak Ridge site is an issue that affects us all. DOE is working to address the issue, but it needs citizen input. One way you can help is to take part in the meetings of the Oak Ridge Site-Specific Advisory Board, a volunteer citizens panel. By attending meetings, you can learn about the cleanup program and voice your opinions. Join us in making our area an even better place to live. For more information, call toll-free or visit us online. Welcome, everyone, to the September meeting of the Oak Ridge Site-Specific Advisory Board. I'd like to particularly welcome um, members of the public. Uh, we please ask that you sign in uh, on the register uh, out front uh, to use name badges and to uh, speak in the microphones when given the opportunity to address the, uh, to address the audience. There's an emergency exit at the rear of the building to my left, your right, down those sets of stairs there. If you need assistance, and in case of a, an emergency, if you'll advise the staff, we'll provide that for you. I uh, want to remind the members of the committee to use your name tents to be recognized and turn them in the vertical position so that I can see you and recognize you to be called on um, during the question and answer period. I'll remind everyone that uh, uh, after the uh, presentation tonight, we'll take questions from the, um, from the board first and then from the from the public and uh, we will provide a microphone uh, for you to to uh, to um, for your question <clears throat> the next meeting uh, will be October the 12th and uh, at this point the the um, topic will be one of two topics it's a little bit up in the air but it will either be the uh, ORNL hot cell cleanup or an update on the uh, Bear Creek burial grounds and that decision will be made within the next two weeks as to exactly which one of those topics it will be. Uh, at this time, uh, our, our uh, um, DDFO uh, is not here tonight, but his able assistant, uh, Dave Adler, is uh, taking his place. And I'm going to turn it over to him for um, some introductions of new members. Dave. Thanks. Um, yes, uh, John is out in Richland, Washington this week, and Sue Cange is sailing on the Mediterranean. So once again, I'm the best you get. Um, I'd like to go through and uh, introduce our 10 new members that we've got tonight. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because most of us have gotten to know one another a little bit the past retreat, and the new members, for the most part, had a chance to talk to each other, to introduce their background and such. But if I could just run through it real quickly, and I'll ask people to raise their hands as I give their names. Uh, Jimmy Bell, Mr. Bell, could you? Hi. Um, Mr. Bells of Kingston currently provides consulting services to Egan, Fitzpatrick, Malsh, and Lawrence. A legal firm involved in environmental issues. Uh, previously, he worked as a chemist at Oak Ridge National Lab from 63 to 95. Mr. Bell relieved, uh, received his BS in chemistry from Berry College and a doctorate in physical chemistry from the University of Mississippi. Thanks for joining on. Uh, Janet Hart. Where you at? Hi, Janet. Um, of Andersonville, an, an, an environmental engineer with the Knox County Department of Air Quality Management. Um, she's worked there since 2004. Received her BS in Civil Engineering, a BS in Education, and an MS in Environmental Engineering from the University of Tennessee. David Hamelwright. Where you at? Hi, Dave. Marketing Director for Alliance Corporation, providing construction services primarily to school systems. Has a background including 20 years as a construction project manager in commercial, retail, and food service construction. 10 years in maintenance management in retail and K-12 through 12 public schools. Uh, BA in American history from Hobart College. Dave lives in Lenore City. Dr. Holmes, are you here tonight? He's not here. Okay, then we will introduce him next time. Uh, Ms. Faye Martin. Hi. Uh, of Oak Ridge, retired in 1996 from Oak Ridge National Lab where she worked as an environmental toxicologist. That's what my degree's in also. Uh, she received her BS in Chemistry, Botany, Zoology from University College of the West Indies, an MS in Biology from McMaster University, and a Doctorate in Environmental Toxicology from the University of Tennessee. Jacob Martin, I think also is not here tonight, am I correct? No, Jacob. 
catch Jacob next time. Scott McKinney. I know Scott's here. Hi, Scott. Knoxville, Vice President of Petroleum Services with Groundwater Envi and Environmental Services, Inc. Uh, this outfit provides environmental assessment and remediation services. Scott has 20 years of experience in all phases of project management, from site characterization efforts through remediation and closure. Received his Associate in Engineering Technology from the State Technical Institute in Knoxville and a BS in Civil Engineering from the University of Tennessee. Mr. Paulus. Gregory Paulus, there you are. Retired as president, owner from Metalite Industries, Inc., which produces and modifies products for persons with mobility disabilities. Retired from the U.S. Air Force, where he achieved the rank of lieutenant colonel. B.S. in mechanical engineering from Marquette University and an MBA from Central Michigan University, resident of Rockwood. Welcome. And Thomas Falunas, not here. Okay, so we got seven out of ten. Um, could we just have a quick hand welcoming all our new members to the board and uh, Spencer will be arranging I guess you've gotten some orientation training and Spencer will be arranging for me to run you around the reservation and give you kind of the on the ground uh, perspective on what we're doing out here um, we'll pick times that make sense if we break up into a couple groups that's fine Spencer however it works best for people we can do it on a Saturday, we can do it on an afternoon, just whatever you can make work, Spencer. I guess that's it. Unless you want me to continue on with my comments as alternate DDFO. Move smartly forward. Okay, that's next on the agenda, so I'll do that. Okay, um, let's see, we've done new members. Um, there are There is some big news here in terms of how DOE uh, is gonna proceed with administration of the SSAB. Um, I sent one email out to everyone announcing that we no longer have food. Sorry about that. I'll miss that also. Um, for those of you that scrolled down, you saw that I also incompetently sent an additional email that Spencer had kindly ghostwritten for me, but I'll go ahead and talk about it. Um, basically, we are changing out some staff on the SSAB, in the support, DOE support staff to the SSAB. The biggest and most obvious change that you'll, you'll notice is that Pat Halsey is going to leave and we're bringing on Melissa Noe. Um, this fits for both of them. Pat has been working more than full time for a long time um, and is graciously moving along. <laughs> uh, Melissa Noe is coming on. Actually, uh, Melissa, why don't you go ahead and say a couple things about yourself and then I'll talk about the other changes. I live in Kingston, Tennessee with my uh, husband and my 11-year-old son. I graduated from the University of Tennessee in mechanical engineering. Uh, I worked for TVA for five years at the Power Operations Training Center at Sequoia, and I've been with EM since 1993. Uh, I also handled the uh, Price Anderson and uh, worker safety and health compliance issues, and I handled the emergency management. So this will be another role I'm going to be taking on. And, Pat's agreed to help me get through this, and I look forward to working to y'all, working with y'all in the next couple of months. Okay, a couple other changes. Um, well, actually, first of all, thanks to Melissa for signing on, and a special, special thanks to Pat, who I've worked with now for 30 or 40 years, <laughs> um, and who I'm going to miss horribly, and she will be just two offices down, so I'll still be able to get her help and insights on this stuff. But Pat, it's been fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, okay, other committees. I will be working with the executive committee, a role Pat previously filled. Ben Adams, is Ben here tonight? Okay. I'm sorry, Ben Williams. Ben Adams. <laughs> Ben Adams will not be covering the public outreach. <laughs> ben Williams from our public affairs office, um, a recent hire to DOE, will be helping with the public outreach group. Um, he's a great guy, and I think you'll like working with him. Um, the DOE liaison to the stewardship work will be Joyce Sager, who many of you know. She's presented before the group many, many times um, and is a, is a great person for that activity. The EM group that I used to uh, or have until now been the liaison to. We do not have a permanent name for yet. Um, I will continue to help out on that. And uh, Miss Karen Ott, who is John Eschenberg's chief operating officer, will also 
be coming to those EM meetings until we pick a new person. The plan is to pick a relatively senior person. Um, there's actually a competition underway within uh, the Oak Ridge office right now to hire a new deputy to the director for all project management within the EM program. That person, when selected, will have as one of their responsibilities supporting the EM subcommittee, and that seems an appropriate person to use because they will have a very broad understanding of all of the technical activities underway within the EM program. And I think that's the sum total of the changes. Uh, it should be relatively seamless to you folk. Oh, I'm sorry, I left out Delisa Atwater, who will be helping out on the board process and finance committee. She's from our finance group. Um, so the net effect is that there will be some new faces. They're all good people for this work. There will be more faces. There will be more DOE people involved in supporting the SSAP board. Um, it should all occur relatively seamlessly, and we will have overlap. It's not like one face disappears and one face shows up. There's going to be a little bit of overlap to make sure that the new people are comfortable before we start back up. I didn't mention here, but I should have, um, the, the ad hoc budget prioritization committee that we fire up for a few months once a year will be shepherded, or at least supported, I should say, by Alan Stokes, who is the deputy for our planning and budget group in DOE. And I will also be engaged with that some, too. So that's that's the staffing changes I wanted to mention. A couple other real quick things, uh, good news, I suppose. The uh, much-awaited initiation of the tank W1A excavation activity has actually begun now, which is a big deal for us. Um, that's been a tough project for us. We've had a, a, t a tough time getting through all the necessary uh, startup activities that we go through in order to convince ourselves that we're ready to do the work <laughs> safely. But the work is underway now. Dirt is being dug around what is probably the most significant source of groundwater contamination at Oak Ridge National Laboratories. So that's good news, and we'll keep working on that until the, the job's done and the tank's gone. Um, in addition, we've now completed all field work on the Bethel Valley Burial Grounds project. Um, I've shown you pictures of that before, but it's an area west of Oak Ridge National Labs that was one of the earlier burial grounds used by the lab for disposal of material produced by the laboratory. We've now completed a fairly complete hydrologic isolation uh, system for that, a, a RICRA, a hazardous waste landfill type cap, interception trenches on the uh, up gradient side, and other systems designed to hopefully depress the water table and minimize contact between waste and groundwater, and also minimize the influx of shallow groundwater flow and rainwater through the waste in that burial area. We expect that to result in some fairly significant improvements in water, surface water and groundwater quality in the area, but the results will be in the monitoring, which we'll be doing over the next year or so to see how well it works. There likely will still be additional measures required for groundwater in the area, but this is a fairly significant milestone. It was one of the ARA projects, and it involved a lot of earth moving, a lot of engineering, and we're pleased to have it done from a field perspective for now. Um, that's all the things I wanted to mention, but if there are any questions about anything, let me know, and I'll take a, take a shot at answering them. Anyone have any questions for Ward Dave? Yes, G yes Jimmy? On the removable of, uh, on the removal of tank W1A? Yes, sir. Uh, maybe in, 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 the, uh, in previous meetings you've had discussions on this, and I wasn't present. Is it empty? It is empty. Um, tank W1A, you may be familiar with it, is a tank that uh, received wastewater from the 3019 facility. It was emptied and its contents were sent out to our uh, transgenic waste management facility, store, the Mountain Valley storage tanks, no many years ago. There is some in leakage into the tank. Um, the piping that goes to the tank had become detached in one location. And there's this, the most significant contamination, contamination that still remains in the area is in the soil surrounding the tank. The tank itself has actually been evacuated and acid, acid washed. But the outside of the tank, and in particular the dirt around the tank, is pretty loaded up with the types of contaminants that were supposed to all end up in the tank. 
Excuse me. Were the contents of the tank the source of the plume? No. Actually, the contaminated soil surrounding the tank and the liquid effluent that didn't make it into the tank uh, were the source of the plume. And what will be done about that earth? That earth will be boxed up and, uh, according to plan, shipped to the Nevada test site. It's not the type of waste that we could easily get into our on-site disposal facility. It's actually it's fairly highly contaminated. Our hope is that it doesn't prove to be so contaminated as to require management as, as a transuranic waste, but it is outside of the range of contamination levels that we typically manage locally, so it will be boxed up and shipped to the Nevada test site. As a contingency, if we do encounter any waste that meets the definition of transuranic waste, I won't get into the technical business associated with what meets that definition, but it's the even more highly contaminated material. If we encounter that, it will be placed into storage and processed through our transuranic waste processing facility and dispositioned out in the waste isolation pilot project out in Carlsbad. One more, please. Oh, sure. What do you do with the tank? The tank is going to be pulled and sent to a commercial facility to be cut up and also disposed of out west. I think the Bear Creek Road, SC, I'm not sure which facility. I'll find out and get it back to Spencer. But it's going to a commercial facility. Am I right in my earlier comment that this will be the first DOE tank that's ever been taken out of the ground? <sighs> to my knowledge, on the reservation, it will be the first radioactive waste tank that will have been pulled. There are a lot of other tanks that we've evacuated and filled up with grout and basically set aside for additional future decision making. I'm also aware of a lot of other tanks around the complex that basically still have the waste in them and are still the subject of a remediation project. I'm not aware of any rad waste tanks that have been pulled. There may be I'm one, but I'm not aware of one. i go so far as to say that's the first one in the whole DOE system. It might be. I'm not aware of any other. Yeah. Any other <coughs> questions for um, for Dave? And before we leave, leave that, uh, you, can, you can tell we have a lot of turnover on the board, a lot of new members. Uh, we are receiving, the, I think, the upshot of, of, of Dave's comments about the, the changes from the uh, the DOE support staff is that we have more support um, than we had previously, not less, and I think that's going to be a good thing. We had days stretched pretty thin in a lot of places. He's coming a lot of bases, as well as as Pat. Pat, the, on behalf of the board, we're really going to miss you. You've been here a, a long time and have been just super. And and I don't know. I'm not. I, Melissa's going to do a great job, but boy, you're going to be missed. Unfortunately. Um I may have been stretched thin, but I gained weight. <laughs> and that's why they've cut off the food, I'm sure. That's right. Uh, we'll move on to our uh, liaisons first uh, from TDEC, John Alsley. Thank you, Ron. I uh, do not have any amount announcements uh, this evening, but I'd be glad to take any questions that the board may have. Are there any questions for John? Thank you. And then our EPA liaison, Connie Jones. Thank you. Um, I had a tour of ETTP this morning, and things are going well at the K33 uh, recovery site. But I am more pleased with the se separation of the tech units at K25 from the non-tech units. So they are moving north on the east wing, and that's it's a good thing. So now they can focus on the characterization that needs to be conducted in the tech units. But separating those two areas was very critical to this project. I don't have any other uh, announcements uh, or updates, but I will be more than happy to attempt to answer questions if asked. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Jones? Thank you. There, there being none, we'll now um, turn it over to our student representative for public comments. The public comment period is now open. Um, Norman Mulvaney, please state your name and keep your comments to three minutes. 
Good evening, I'm Norman Mulvan, and I'm the chair of the Local Oversight Committee Citizens Advisory Panel, and I'd like to add that that is still true. For those of you who have been following the saga, I'd like to thank everybody in here who for their support, too. That was very interesting. The, um, just as a brief uh, analysis of what happened, uh, we had a couple of members of the permanent board that, that uh, got a little excited about uh, how we did business and the status of our business. One fellow didn't like our 501c3 designation, and so he thought that there was a financial liability associated with that. And another fellow didn't like the um, just didn't like the way we did business in terms of writing letters to people. You know, like you don't write letters directly to the to the end person. You write a letter to Mr. Eschenberg, and he in turn may pass it on to somebody, or he may answer it himself. Well. We have we have used the technique of actually writing directly to the person at DOE or the state or anybody else directly, and whoever it is, uh, it didn't matter. But in this case, the fellow thought that we had perhaps overstepped our bounds, and there were a couple of other reasons also. One fellow didn't like the way that we answered a lot of our questions. That there were some issues about how we actually presented ourselves to the outside world. So what happened was on Friday they had a vote and there was a, um, there was a, um, a resolution that was voted on and it kind of got defanged along the way. So it didn't come out as bad as it, it, it appeared in the beginning. And although it has not been approved yet, I think it probably will be. So anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for helping out. Uh, I'm very pleased to see the K-25 uh, separation take place, tech buildings. Uh, I'm not going to be pleased when I find out how much that whole thing costs, though. So I've expressed my opinion on that before, and I have a feeling that it's going to be it's going to be a number which is going to represent more than I care to even think about. So. But I am pleased that we've, we're moving along. I'm a little concerned, perhaps, in the change of direction on a couple of items. One of them was the change from uh, can't remember the word. Can't remember the word. I mean, the foaming to stabilize it. Yeah. I was a little concerned that that had change its direction because we put so much work into that originally. And uh, and I'm assuming that these guys are pros and they know what they're doing. So, all right, thank you very much. Yes, Ms. Jones. If I could um, respond to Mr. Mulvillian's concern about foaming, that has not formally been presented to the regulators and that was part of the reason for uh, having the foam introduced into the equipment. So we're still evaluating that. So I would like, wouldn't want you to think that that was a done deal yet. And I understand that the contractors are evaluating alternatives to foaming, and we would be welcome to looking at those alternatives. Bill Twos, please state your name and keep your comment to three minutes. Just take him a microphone. I am, my name is Bill Tews, uh, and I worked at both K-25 and at 112 during the war and afterwards. Uh, I am continuing to uh, encourage you all and the DOE to memorialize all of the plants in Oak Ridge. And when you started calling K-25 the, uh, by another name, uh, you provided an opportunity to recognize 
both K-25 and S-50. For those of you who have never heard the words S-50 before, it is the liquid diffusion facility which is lo located actually on the powerhouse of K-25. It separated uranium for approximately a year and a half. And according to Colonel Nichols, it reduced the World War II by about 10 days. He did not argue when the AEC experts said about a week, but anyone who knows, who lived at that time, knows that a week was a tremendous importance for our country. And I hope that, it, that you will develop some means of memorializing that plan. That's all. Susan Galvecki, please state your name and keep your comments to three minutes. Thank you. Um, I'm Susan Gowarecki, Executive Director of the Local Oversight Committee. Um, uh, I know you have a few new board members. I want to briefly tell you what the organization is. We uh, were formed in, uh, in conjunction with the Tennessee Oversight Agreement in 1991, chartered in 1992 to provide a means for local governments, the host counties and those surrounding and downstream of the reservation um, and the city of Oak Ridge to provide input into DOE cleanup decisions. And our mission has expanded to include emergency management issues and coordination, um, historic preservation, uh, mission-related issues, and, and anything that um, might might affect the uh, health and well-being of local communities. Um, if you read Frank Munger's co uh, article on Saturday, you probably thought that uh, we had been ended. But in truth, the um, uh, uh, board has voted to transition the organization under uh, from a 501c3, as Norman mentioned, under the auspices of one of the local governments yet to be determined as a fiscal agent. And this should save us money with overhead. Um, and um, it may not, in fact, impact the way that we operate. So uh, I'm I guess as curious as many of you are to see what uh, will ultimately be decided by the county mayors and executives. Um, uh, but um, I think we are coming to a successful transition ahead of us, and um, I've uh, been very appreciative of the uh, numerous expressions of support from many of your members here. Um, I also wanted to mention that we do have a citizens' advisory panel as well. Uh, we interface strongly with the um, SSAB. Many of our members participate on um, your subcommittees, especially stewardship and EM. And uh, now you have a new member, Faye Martin, who has also been a, a longtime member of our Citizens Advisory Panel. So um, I hope that uh, we continue to have a, a strong working relationship. Uh, we will continue to, to bring you the perspective uh, for local governments um, as far as what uh, the cleanup activities mean on the Oak Ridge Reservation. Thank you very much. Are there any other members of the public who want to comment? Okay. As a Citizens Advisory Board to the Department of Energy on Environmental Cleanup, we want to encourage the community at large to attend and participate at our board and committee meetings. If you are unable to attend, please send in your questions and comments to the address shown. Appropriate comments and questions will be read during the public comment section of the SSAB meeting and will be given the same consideration by the board and DOE as those given in person. Meeting schedules and various ways to communicate with the ORSSAB can be obtained by calling 241 48 or 4583 or 241 Four five eight four, or by visiting our website.
thank you. Um, tonight's presentation is going to be an overview of the cleanup work that uh, our new uh, cleanup contractor, UCOR, will provide here at the Oak Ridge Reservation. And we are pleased tonight, very pleased to have uh, the, their top man, the president of UCOR, Leo Sane, and their project manager is, uh, will present t the, tonight. He has 37 years' experience in nuclear facilities operations, plant startups, process improvement through the use of integrated safety management systems. Before coming to Oak Ridge, he was executive vice president for the performance assurance and operations for URS's global management and operations services group. He's also served as uh, to Washington Savannah Rivers president ex chief vice president. We're responsible for managing Savannah Rivers 10,000 person workforce and 1.3 billion dollars of work scope. And so we look forward to having a long relationship with uh, with UCOR and uh, we're very anxious to 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 hear Mr. Sain's presentation. Let's all give him before he starts, let's give him a round of applause for winning the contract. Thank you. Am I on? Can you hear me? Okay, good. Uh, as he said, I'm Leo Sain. Uh, I'm actually very glad to say that uh, personally I'm a Tennessee native. Uh, URS is, uh, I, I won't say the whole word, but the acronym GMOS uh, that he just mentioned is actually headquartered out of Aiken, South Carolina. Uh, I went to Aiken, South Carolina in 1989. I had 15 years with TVA, and I'll show you how small this business really is. I hired Melissa Noy at TVA, so, uh, and that was a smart thing to do. Uh, so I actually worked with her for the five years she was there. I transferred to, or took a job with Westinghouse Savannah River Company in 89, and either slightly before or shortly after, uh, she transferred to Savannah River with the DOE. And uh, how many years were you there with DOE? Three years. Three years. And then, <clears throat> like a good Tennessee uh, native, uh, came back to Tennessee. So, anyway, I went to Aiken, 89. I remember telling my wife, she said, what have you done? Where are we? And uh, I said, don't worry about it. We'll only be here a couple of years. So 21 years later, here I am. Uh, you know, UCOR uh, is very happy to be uh, in Oak Ridge, and we're very happy to uh, take on the challenges associated with the ETTP, because as you know, they are many. Uh, the area we're going to talk about tonight is mainly this area right here. That's the ETTP. <coughs> we do manage some OPS and S&M, surveillance and maintenance, at ORNL and at Y12. Now we have this little cleanup job that uh, you just heard about called Tank W1A. Uh, and our goal is to get that job done. Uh, we uh, took over on August 1st. That job came over to us uh, during our transition. Uh, the DOE actually asked me to embed a couple of our people over with Bechtel Jacobs. Uh, so we had uh, some of our senior people uh, immersed in that job for the three months that we were in transition, such that when we took over on August 1st, uh, we wasn't taking over something we didn't know anything about. We knew a lot about it. Uh, you've already heard that that job is progressing very well. Uh, we started this week uh, actually removing the soil and you heard a very good explanation of you know where that stuff is going to go. So let me tell you a little bit about UCOR. Uh, it's fairly simple. Uh, UCOR is URS, CH2M Hill, Oak Ridge. Uh, we joined a partnership with URS did with CH2 and formed an LLC. And I don't want to go around saying URS, CH2, M, Hill, Oak Ridge. So UCOR, uh, that's who we are. We also included as part of our team uh, a preferred small business subcontractor, RSI, 
And quite frankly, uh, that made all the sense in the world because RSI has 12 years of experience at K-25 uh, specifically with characterization, the regulatory and characterization, which is very important uh, on a project uh, like the K-25 plant and the other D&D &D work that we'll be doing. You can see uh, you have this presentation, so I'm not going to go through all this, but you, you can see the uh, capabilities of these companies and some of their uh, last few years' recent uh, awards and recognition. Uh, two very large companies. Uh, in fact, uh, URS and CH have worked together many times before. Uh, I did want to introduce Mark Ferry, who's here with me tonight. Mark is the uh, project manager for the K-25 project. Mark and I worked together at Savannah River doing the accelerated cleanup at Savannah River. Uh, that was a four-year accelerated cleanup job. Uh, URS and CH2 are teamed currently on the river quarter closure contract at Hanford, which is a big cleanup contract uh, to clean up stuff very close to the Columbia River. Uh, and we're also teamed on the Idaho Completion Project, which is another very large, complex cleanup. Uh, so the two companies uh, know each other well. This is uh, the team, and I'll tell you that uh, I wanted personally to take this job, if assuming we could win the contract, and we did. <coughs> I remember telling my boss that I wanted to uh, be on the bid for ETTP. And his response to me was, no, uh, I'm going to keep you doing what you're doing. And I remember saying, well, you know, if I don't get on the ETTP bid at Oak Ridge, I'm going to retire. And he said, I think you're going to enjoy Oak Ridge. <laughs> So that's kind of how I got here. But uh, I personally handpicked the people on this team. Uh, I'll very quickly for the people doing the line work, line management, run through them. Uh, sorry about that. I already introduced Mark. Uh, Mark was a vice president of uh, Maine Yankee D&D. &D. Uh, Mark... Uh, was a vice president in the cleanup of Rocky Flats. Uh, he was with me uh, as the president and CEO of CH2 Savannah River Corporation <coughs> at Savannah River for that cleanup. Uh, he spent how many years, Mark, in France? It was in the UK. Or UK, I'm sorry. Two years in the UK. Two years in the UK. Uh, and then came for, for this job. So uh, years of experience. Uh, Steve Dahlgren, who is the project manager for Poplar Creek and Balance of Facilities, uh, has a very similar background to Mark, worked with us at Savannah River. Jeff Bradford, waste disposition manager, uh, actually was waste disposition manager at Rocky Flats, Mound, and Idaho Closure Project before he came here. Uh, I think a lot of you know Rick Ferguson, the RSI individual on our team. Uh, Rick has the remedial actions and regulatory support. Bob Smith, uh, who is the operations S&M project manager, actually worked with me at Savannah River, but most recently <coughs> was the D4 manager at River Quarter at Hanford before coming here. John McKibben uh, has been at a number of large DOE sites across the complex. Uh, John came here as the president and CEO from West Valley. Cheryl Cabell, uh, ES&H and QA manager uh, for UCOR, uh, was ES&H manager at Savannah River, ES&H manager at Mound, 
and is our ES and H manager here. Uh, Ken Reuter uh, had experience as the project planning, integration, and controls manager at Savannah River, uh, Hanford Tank Farms, and is now here with us at Oak Ridge. Tony Fountain has been a uh, business manager at several DOE sites, including most recently Yucca Mountain. And Tony uh, was corporate business manager for Washington Group International. Uh, so you kind of get a feel for the kind of backgrounds uh, that these people bring. Very experienced people. Uh, and in fact, my personal opinion is the way we succeeded at winning this contract was because of the depth and breadth of this team of individuals. Uh, we understand this kind of work. Someone said it nicely earlier. Uh, we are experienced. It doesn't mean we're perfect. Uh, this is a tough business. <coughs> you know, stuff can happen. Uh, and we've got to always be on guard for that. Uh, that, that's why one of our key themes, <coughs> which you will hear us repeatedly say, is that safety is number one. We are zealots as a company and a group for safety. But it's simply because we are experienced and we know what can happen in this business. And even with the best of planning and the smartest people, uh, you can still run into a surprise. You can definitely see Rocky Flats, Idaho Closure, River Quarter Project, <coughs> Savannah River, and the Mound Closure Project. All of those major DOE projects, CH and URS, have been together on. This will give you an idea of what I just said about safety. And if you look, Savannah River remediation. Uh, we, URS and CH are on that contract together, and you see where they are in the DOE complex. Uh, as the uh, CWI, it's called Idaho Closure Group, which is CH and URS, Washington Closure Hanford, which is CH and URS. Uh, you can see that uh, ETTP is here, and our intent will be to move ETTP up until we get to the top. Commitment to safety, uh, absolutely no question. We are totally committed to the safety. In our business, you don't do work if you can't do it safely. Uh, and you've seen it time and time again. You know, Eversight has had instances of that. Uh, when you have people getting hurt or when you have nuclear safety events, uh, you all know as well as I do that uh, you're stopped dead in your tracks, you're spending a lot of money, and you're not getting anything done. And on top of it, the most important thing, especially from the personnel safety side, is you've got people that are hurt, and we don't want that. We want people to go home the, at the end of the day the way they came to work. So what did we say we were going to do from the standpoint of ETTP? We said that we would commit top talent. I just told you about that top talent. We said that, hey, when we get here, we're going to remove institutional barriers that hinder progress. I heard the comments about foaming. Let me tell you, foaming is expensive. And not only that, but it's hazardous. It's a huge fire hazard. And if there is a way to eliminate foaming that has to be technically proven, I understand that, and people need to be briefed and they need to know the whole story. But you should expect that we'd go do that. This kind of talent, that's what it can bring here. So we'll be happy uh, to do those briefings uh, at y'all's convenience. 
Uh, it's a new culture uh, where our expectations is that functions are going to work together to achieve common objectives. We're looking for the safest, most cost-effective methods. And I'll give you an example of that. Mark and I worked at Savannah River, as I already told you, and we had something called 800 underground tanks in F area associated with the old F Canyon. Those tanks uh, over the years had had lab waste in them. And our job was to empty those tanks and clean them. Uh, there were regulatory milestones associated with that. Those tanks were as contaminated as W1A, similar kind of tank. Uh, and we had some folks that uh, had an elaborate design and was going to do it robotically. And in the end, we wound up emptying those tanks by sampling them. Over the years, the way people had sampled those tanks was with a rope and a bucket. And we actually emptied those tanks ahead of schedule and did it very cheaply by just using the sampling method that had been used there for years. So there's a good example of what we'll look for. Uh, proven D&D &D techniques, obviously with the background from Mound, Savannah River, Idaho Closure, River Corridor, Rocky Flats. Uh, chances are someone in this group has seen what we're going to encounter before. And there's someone in the group that's going to already know, here's how we did that. Two decades of lessons learned by these companies and records of operational excellence. What's the basic scope? K2527, Poplar Creek, and complete tank W1A removal at ORNL. Uh, open up new scope early where possible. Uh, we're uh, very focused on trying to save money. And if we can save money, we want to apply that money to other work scope and maximize the money we will get to be able to do the maximum amount of cleanup work possible. Provide ongoing operations support, uh, and that's the operations S&M that I told you about uh, associated with Y12 and ORNL. Uh, we also have a responsibility in this contract for operating EMWMF and two sanitary landfills. And then obviously our main goal is to achieve closure of the site and transfer uh, the land to industrialization, reindustrialization. What's our approach? We said, hey, we'll go and we'll challenge the status quo. We'll leverage safety commitments and culture to enhance the productivity. Uh, the good thing about the ETTP project is the workforce is great. Uh, great workforce. They want to do the right thing. They want to get work done. Uh, we will make waste management an enabler of remediation and D&D activities. Our view is that historically here, that was not the case. Uh, get paperwork off the critical path. Uh, if paperwork is holding up the ability to go do work, something's not right. Establish a backlog of available work so that when something does have to be stopped, <coughs> there's something else to go work on. Focus resources, including subcontractors, on achieving progress in the field. What's the current status? All the buildings in yellow, K-33, for example, there is the west wing of K-25 that's down. Uh, you've already heard the discussion about on K-25, uh, on the east wing, the separation between the tech area is right in here, and that's been complete, and the machines have turned, and they're going that way right now on K-25. Uh, 
K-29 is gone. Uh, you see the building is to remain in orange. And then the stuff that's demo ready, K-31 and this north end of K-25. Obviously, the most important task we got is K-25. Uh, the gentleman that said something earlier about he didn't want to hear the price tag. Well, I got to tell you, the price tag is already enormous uh, before we ever got here. And uh, what's got to be done with K-25 now is get it gone so that you stop spending money on it. Anything that delays that project, uh, you know, a week, months, a year, is just adding to that price tag. <clears throat> so we proposed that we'll complete D&D in July 2014, uh, and that we'll receive regulatory approval of site-wide remedial action report in 2020. and build a stellar safety record as we go forward doing that in our pursuit of public and environmental protection. Minimize DOE's residual environmental liabilities. Here's a basic overview of the strategy. Uh, Mark, I'm gonna let you say something about this right quick. We did talk about a uh, segment in the building. Um, we, uh, when K-25 is done, we're going to preserve the, that segmentation shop and the grouting facility that's up there now as we move into K-27 and use the experience that we're gaining on 25 now to move right into 27. Uh, so the uh, gentleman that spoke about the price tag, I agree with you 100%, and we're not going to do that, or at least if I do that, I'm not going to be here very long. Um, so right now, like uh, Leo said, we're moving up the... Uh, the TCE side moving north and uh, that that north end and I know um, the other gentleman spoke about the preservation and uh, I agree with the uh, historical significance of K-25 and uh, all of Oak Ridge believe me I spent the first 25 years of my life in uh, commercial operations um, and uh, the reactor was supposed to be critical all the time and uh, most of that fuel came from K-25 uh, a lot of that that I burned. So um, I want you all to know that I have a personal tie to this and understand the uh, historical significance. Uh, on the other hand, um, we need to make a decision on that north end because right now, uh, if we keep munching north and then we stop because the uh, north side is, uh, we're still talking about what we're going to do, then that's not going to be a good thing for anybody. And the money's going to get less every year now uh, from Congress. So I just ask y'all to get together and uh, anything I could do, I'd, I'd certainly pitch in um, to get a decision on that north end because we're going to be there pretty soon. And then uh, finish this up in uh, 2014. Uh, when we when we looked at this uh, building, it's it's uh, mostly D and D is a series of things that you're running into surprises and different types of uh, like at Rocky Flats is the glove boxes and everything was different. This building is massive, but it's kind of like these stages are the same um, as you move through it. So we thought we'd take kind of an assembly line approach. It's not very uh, that innovative, but when you look at it, it's not uh, as, as it's not something new every time. Um, we talk uh, uh, about the, uh, the foam and I know that we owe you all uh, an explanation on that, and we'll, we'll, we're kind of a little bit late, but um, been doing a lot of other stuff too. Uh, uh, maximize, when I say maximize the amount of waste disposed on site, um, that's the, uh, I want to try to go with the regular uh, original deal, and I talked to Mr. Owsley before the RFP came out, and it was like the bad stuff was supposed to go west and the not so bad stuff was supposed to stay on site. And that's what we're trying to do is um, ship the Tech 99 and uh, the U-235 uh, west, either uh, NTS or Clive in Utah. And uh, the not so bad stuff staying EMWMF. 
Uh, we are going to, uh, we do believe, as Leo said, in controlled demolition and pack as you go and waste. And I know that when, um, when I first got here, uh, we started demoing that uh, segmentation without the waste handling uh, profiles approved, which I don't like to do at all because we're doing it at risk and then I can't ship the waste as I go, so it kind of lays on the ground. I appreciate the efforts certainly from the EPA and the state uh, and the DOE to uh, accelerate those waste handling profiles. I know people spend a lot of hours late at night um, <clears throat> with issues with their families and stuff, and I really appreciate that. And I want to let you know that we are shipping waste um, really fast. Uh, and we're even, um, we started this Monday, we started attacking that uh, waste pile left over from the Northeast Bridge. So we're moving that too. 50 something trucks yesterday. Yeah. We're, we're, we're moving. There's a lot. Come out, come on out and see it. Um, okay. Okay. Who's put this? It. Well, I was going to keep going. Go ahead. Well, I was just checking. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, as we said, I mean, this is pretty not very dramatic either. As we go, uh, we're through here now. We're, we're moving north to the east non-TC side. Uh, we did leave a buffer unit here that I understand is, is, in the, this, is in this waste handling plan and this waste profile. And so after we get finished with that, we will take this down uh, before we do the, the tech units and take it down in the same manner. Um, what's, uh, what's the critical path in this? I can tell you right now that uh, it's that it's that north end. There's, um, there's a lot of stuff in the vaults. There's a lot of uh, equipment that needs to be mined in those vaults. There's, um, I found out after I got here, there's things called monoliths, which I never heard of before, but they looked like that thing from 2001 Space Odyssey, the, the big rectangle that stood there on the moon. Uh, but they're made out of concrete, and there's stuff inside them that we we'll, we need to get rid of, and we will. And then uh, this is where our, uh, the trailers are. They're in the drop zone. We need to get rid of those. And so when these machines get here, hopefully this is cleared up so they can move right to here. And by then, we'll have this decontaminated, the waste profiles, the sampling, and everything will be done here. And we'll just move right in that there and then head over to 27. I'm not sure who's running the machine here. Are you running it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Historical. I just put some new stuff up on top for you. I didn't know it was. Oh, yeah. Well, I, well, I talked about that. Uh, uh, the things that will, we'll, as we move north, um, we certainly want, if, if we have to stop, I have to demob the uh, machines that we're leasing. I have to lay off the craft and then remob and restaff, and it just takes a lot of money and time to do that. So I'm, I'm pretty sure we can get there on that. Yep, talked about that. Oh, I didn't know how to let stuff on there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, what are we going to do in the tech area? Um, the Tech 99. What, what is, I mean, Tech 99 is a low energy beta emitter for um, all you uh, nuke folks. Um, it's not the worst stuff that I've ever worked with. I can tell you from a dose standpoint, 60, strontium 90, things like that. From a contamination standpoint, PU 238, PU 239. Etc. All much worse than Tech 99, and I'm not, not, not trying to diminish it. Uh, the biggest problem with Tech 99 is if it gets into the environment, it's very water soluble. It gets into the ecosystem, and uh, and that's the that's the main issue with the Tech 99. Um, from a worker standpoint, it's an internal hazard if we uh, inhale it or uh, ingest it somehow. But there's no dose uh, coming from it. Um, so, so we know how to get rid of Tech 99. I can tell you that uh, that is a leaky building. Um, it rains in there three days after it rains. I was in the tech area yesterday, and it's still raining in there. Um, so the faster that we can get rid of that stuff, the better, because uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it would be much happier uh, out west than it is where it is now.
cleanup of environmental hazards at the Department of Energy's Oak Ridge site is an issue that affects us all. DOE is working to address the issue, but it needs citizen input. One way you can help is to take part in the meetings of the Oak Ridge Site-Specific Advisory Board, a volunteer citizens panel. By attending meetings, you can learn about the cleanup program and voice your opinions. Join us in making our area an even better place to live. For more information, call toll-free or visit us online.